It's time for part two of our tech tour here at the Ironman World Champs. And today, everything has a bit of a Norwegian feel to it. Yeah, part one had a sprinkle of Norwegian in it. Today's feels like almost everything has some sort of link to the Norwegian team. Yep, let's go see what we can find. Alright, we've got some brand new wheels from Parkours here. This is part of their Think Wider Aero range. We've got a 6875 behind me here. This is the Chrono wheel set. We've got the Chrono Max, which is 83 mil depth. And then, of course, the disc. Unfortunately, we won't see people riding this in Kona, but I will get onto that very shortly. What's quite interesting about these wheels, obviously the name gives it away, Think Wider Aero, they are incredibly wide. So we've got 32 mil width on the front here and 30.5 on the rear, and also a difference in the profile of the wheels. And the reason that they've done that is that by using some fancy devices like this, this is a ultrasonic anemometer. It will go on the through axle here, essentially what you get on the top of mass on yachts, and it, it basically measures measures the direction the wind flows coming in at the yaw angles and what they found is that there's a significant difference in the yaw angle at the front of the bike compared to the rear. In fact, it's narrower at the rear. So they've actually gone back to almost that traditional V-shaped rim profile that we saw on wheels going back sort of five, ten years ago. And that's obviously an incredibly fast profile, but on the front where that yaw angle might be slightly more increased, they've gone for that slightly more curved uh, profile and with that the wider rim width, which just makes that a little bit more stable. So we see that coming across also into the 83, and then the disc wheel. Now they've brought this out here actually to do a little bit more testing with, and essentially try and prove that a disc wheel should be allowed at Kona. And in fact, could improve your handling and stability on a course like Kona, even in the gusts that you experience out on the Queen K. Now they're doing this with, again, that ultrasonic anemometer, but also this little accelerometer go on the handlebars here and basically measure the amount of movement in the handlebars and their aim and they're pretty confident in this it will show that you're incredibly stable on this wheel all right this is a really exciting sound i've been buzzing to get to this one actually because we've got three products here that are doing quite high level tech and performance orientated stuff but they're making it incredibly accessible for the likes of you and I. Now you will have seen all three of these devices being used by the Norwegian team the likes of Gustav and Christian and they're coming together they're working together under the banner data powered performance because they complement each other so well. So first off we've got this VO2 master which is something you can use out in the real world you don't necessarily have to be in a lab for this um, we have seen again Christian and Gustav using this. You can actually remove the front of this, swap out the mask, clean it so other athletes can use it. So whilst it's $5,850, it's probably something that a lot of coaches would see a lot of value in. And amazingly, it links up to your Garmin head unit, your watch, so you can actually see the data from this in real time. Now we move on. A device that you may have seen us using before. This is the core device. So this goes against your skin. I've typically used it on my heart rate strap, just attached it on the back there. And we get our core temperature. Again, you can see it is linking up with the Garmin head unit here. So again, you can see your core temperature in real time. This is something we saw the Norwegians again using in the lead up to Beijing, where they did a lot of testing with their suits. So not only is it some testing on your own core temperature, you can actually see how some of your products and equipment is actually impacting you. And there we go, one more. This is the Moxie sensor. So this is looking at your oxygen saturation in your muscles. So what you can do here is actually look at precise intensity control. So essentially, as you increase your intensity, you can see how that starts to affect the oxygen saturation in your muscles. So you can start to kind of gauge where your thresholds are, stay within them, and also look at things like altitude training, the heat, and how that's impacting you. Again, this is something you will have seen the Norwegians using a lot, they're tucked under the skin. Apparently, and I'm told, they've seen as many as 16 devices on one person. Wow. So those three pieces of technology that Mark has just taken you through, the Core IQ, the Moxie, and the uh, VO2 Master, all fall under a Centara Tech group, which is a group that's been started by Olive Alexander Boo, the coach of Christian Blumenfeld and Gustav Eden, and he is really pushing the science of the sport on. 
And another partner in that same group, the Centaur Tech Group, is this, the Body Rocket. Now this is next level technology. Now as you can see, I am next to Christian Blumenfeld's KDX bike, but this is not his Kona bike. This is the bike that he won Ironman St. George on, and it is now his B bike, or his testing bike. And because it's his testing bike, they've added some pretty amazing technology to it. And this is the body rocket. And what it is, is essentially wind tunnel level measurement of your coefficient of drag, but out in the real world. They're bringing wind tunnels onto your bike out in the real world. Now you're probably all familiar with pitot tube type coefficient of drag uh, measurement systems. They're pretty standard these days. You see them quite regularly, people using them to measure their CDA while they're out on the road. But they don't really take into account your body position. What they do is take into account the entire drag of the system. And what this system, the body rocket system, aims to do is remove the drag of the bike so that you're only measuring your own body position. Because, as they say, your drag when you're at a 10 degree yaw is not going to be the same drag with, of your body when you're at a zero degree yaw, when the wind is coming straight head on. And you need to know when you're at the most optimized aero position. And enter the body rocket. Let me show you what the system consists of. Essentially the system takes apart the bike and all the contact points are separated from the bike by sensors that can measure your weight and your lateral forces. So these are the sensors for your saddle. You can see it's mounted here under the saddle. There's another one mounted essentially under the stem or under the, the aero bars, and that's gonna measure your weight and lateral forces on there. And then the same, you would have a pedal. We don't actually have them here. As I say, these are in a early development stage and the pedals are not yet fit for, uh, well, fit for camera. Uh, the designer was telling us that they, we're embarrassed to show them to me just yet, then they're not very refined, but they are coming. So essentially what will happen, by measuring the forces at all of these points, you're separating the bike and the wheels from your body. And they can then create a number that is broadcast through Garmin Connect IQ to your head unit, and you can see in real time what your body's drag is doing. Now obviously this system is in the very early development stage and is still a few months away from being anywhere near using it out on the road. They have done these special uh, design specifically for this bike and there are only a couple of bikes that it actually works on at the moment. But the idea is that all the major bike brands would have a solution where you could mount this at home yourself and have this tech on your bike where you can see your personal drag in real time out on the road without ever going to a wind tunnel. Now, as I say, this design is very much still in its infancy. It's very much in the prototype stage. For example, the pitot tube design you see on here will definitely just be a prototype. It will be much refined. Uh, they're still refining the pedals. This is the brain where the brain will mount, uh, and that'll also be refined in future. But I do think this is the kind of tech that's pushing the limits of what is possible out there on bikes and with groups like the Centara Tech group pushing the boundaries forward we're going to see more and more tech innovations such as this one on these super bikes that the best in the world are riding. All right, we're here at the Ceramic Speed booth again and uh, found a pretty cool bike. This is Tony Kanaan's uh, Trek Speed concept. Uh, so not a brand new bike and obviously not brand new tech for a tech tour but Pretty cool tech for tech to uh, look at that uh, chrome colorway. He's just got it upgraded with the Ceramic Speed OSPW and, uh, and the white UFO chain, uh, and it is a pretty sweet looking bike. I've got some really exciting suits here that some of the pros are going to be using on race day. In fact, this is the literal suits before it's handed over to them. So I'm going to dump two of them down. We'll start with this one. So this is actually David Pleze's suit. It's from Hoob. It's their, well, new aero bridge technology in this suit. In fact, it's the same suit that Alistair Brownlee rode or used in Ironman Sweden to that phenomenal performance. It's also the same technology that you'll have seen the Danish team using, the Team Pursuit, which then the fabric was banned. Uh, also Team Ineos, I believe, have bought some base layers with the same technology in and various other cycling teams. So this is taking the world by storm and they're trying to now introduce this to triathlon. Now what it is, is essentially this double layer system. We can see if I pull this back, we've got these 
lines or kind of strips on the under layer. And apparently when the airflow comes under or through the top layer of fabrics, the way that it controls that airflow with those strips on the under layer that makes this so fast. Now what's interesting about this is that it actually really only comes into effect at around 41 kilometers an hour, which then brings me on to the second suit. Now this is and a Haug suit. As you can see, it's slightly different. It's got this honeycomb effect on the top. It's a single layer. And the reason for that is obviously everyone reacts differently in the wind tunnel or airflow over them, different body shapes. And because she is traveling a little bit slower, that technology, the AeroBridge technology, isn't quite as useful for her. So they've gone for this honeycomb design, which apparently is superb with her but what it does feature is the same move and cool technology which is a polymer that is baked into the suit and actually helps to bring or pull the heat out from the athlete so it reduces apparently the body temperature by around 0.3 degrees celsius which may not sound like much but in a race like Kona that's actually pretty substantial. Now the only issue with the material on Annie's suit is it doesn't perform particularly well in the water. In fact, it's quite draggy, they said. So this brings me on to the third suit. This is Anna Howe's swimsuit and it's been made for her too. Now obviously a swim skin helps with the hydrophobic properties, helps to repel the water, but they've made it sleeve so it will cover that material. They've also made it in the outstretched position so she won't feel too much tension through the shoulders and also it's got these tension strips across the core just to help with holding that form and just overall feel in the water. Well done Hoop. Right, another exciting product here. This one comes from On. Now this product was actually released earlier this year, although in a limited quantity. So we haven't seen a ton of athletes out there racing this, but we're gonna see at least eight of the pro athletes, if not more, racing in this shoe this weekend at the Ironman World Championships. Now the big update to this shoe, this is the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. The three big updates are we've got a carbon board fully carbon going from heel to toe all the way through this shoe. They've increased the stack height now to 39.5 uh, millimeters. They're now using Paybacks Foam, which is kind of the creme de la creme when it comes to cushioning in running shoes these days. And they've actually seen improvements around six to seven centimeters in terms of stride lengths with their athletes. It's also a one piece upper, so it's an incredibly light shoe. It's around 230 grams in a US size nine and We've got some small details which on are very good at. They've got slight silicon on the laces, so it just grips that a little bit better. And also on the inside, on the insole of the shoe, so it just helps you keep that grip inside the shoe. Um, I've got to say, it's a nice looking shoe, isn't it? Okay, this is a really neat bit of tech. In fact, I'm wearing it. This comes from Flow Bio. It's called the Flow Patch. It's a non-invasive bio-wearable sensor that tracks your total fluid loss, sweat rate, and sodium concentration all in real time. Now, I'm actually currently wearing a prototype model, but you will be able to get a full mass-produced, finished product very, very soon. Now, how this works is it simply stores all the information and data in real time from your session syncs that with your workout session files. Currently it's just from Garmin, but there will be other platforms in the very near future. And it basically takes that time frame that you're doing the workout and gives you the information, your total fluid loss, sweat rate, sodium concentration for that session afterwards. Now that currently is all accessible through the app. You'll be able to analyze session to session, but because it is storing it all in real time, there is scope for it in the very near future to be showing that in real time on your head unit, your watch. This isn't currently something the Norwegians are using, but something tells me they probably will be soon. And in case you're wondering, this is actually a rechargeable device. You can take the top off, recharge that. That's the bit that kind of has the brain in it. And then the underneath part is a stick on patch. All right, now we have some tech from Castelli, and we've actually seen this suit before. Mark got his hands on it at Eurobark earlier this year. Uh, this is the PR2 speed suit, and we believe it is the suit that Cam Worth will be riding this weekend at the race. Uh, it has these laminar flow uh, silicon grippers on the, on the arm uh, for, obviously, the break that airflow and make it smoother. 
It also features this BTW or balls to the wall technology, uh, which we've seen in some cycle suits that have been used by the professional cyclists. And now it's in this triathlon suit. Apparently saves six watts at 10 to 20 degree your angle. Uh, it's a paper thin material, and then it has these laminar flow strips on it. And then down at the bottom of the suit, for the, for the legs. Now where a normal suit would add a silicon gripper so that the suit doesn't ride up, all they've done is take that stretch woven material and slightly change the weave so that the lycra of the weave comes to the surface, the inner surface, and that grips to the leg. So without any, any material or any weight, they've got the gripper effect. As I said, we have already seen this PR2 speed suit, but this from Castelli, we haven't seen. This is their new swim skin which also we believe Cam Worth will be wearing this weekend. Uh, it's the first swim skin from Castelli. It is paper thin and incredibly light hydrophobic material. Uh, and it features a, a reverse zipper, obviously, so that you don't accidentally unzip it during the swim. And then also at the bottom of these legs has that same change of the weave so that the lycra comes to the surface without adding any material. They've got that gripper effect on the legs. Well, Ceramic Speed Booth delivering the goods again. As we found before, a lot of the pro bikes will be dropped off here. In fact, we can see Anna Howes over there out of shot. But this bike is none other than Magnus Ditlevs. Uh, we did feature his custom OSPW Aero Jockey Wheel just yesterday. It's now fitted, but we got to stop and admire this bike, haven't we? Because this could be the fastest bike on course this weekend. But one of the standout features, not only this 60 tooth uh, single chain ring, are these aero bars. Now, I believe he actually came over to the UK. He did some testing at Silverstone with Simon Smart from Drag to Zero, but also brought over the Danish track team or one of the people from there, specialists there, to help with this. But look at it, it is a weapon. Now, following on from yesterday's video, of course, we got to take a look at Florian Angus Cube Arium C68X prototype bike with that camouflage paintwork on it. Then after that, we were presented with Lucy Charles Barkley's bike, her final race bike, custom paintwork for the Ironman World Championships. And now, we've been presented with Florian Angert's bike. So he's swapping everything out. So this is the paintwork that he's going to be riding on for race day. We've got this awesome kind of blue drip fade effect. We've got the orange splatter over the frame. And also what we didn't have on the bike yesterday was actually the hydration system in frame. So there is a bladder down here by the bottom bracket. We've got a tube coming up through the down tube and then up through here. And that can be refilled on the fly. We've got 750, sorry, 850 mil down here and 750 mil up here. What a cool bike. Now we have also got a full pro bike feature on this coming up very soon on the channel. So stay tuned for that. Well, that was a lot of tech, and uh, some of it actually uh, got my mind a little bit boggled, like that body rocket thing. I'm not sure I fully understand it yet, but wow, what a lot of tech. I was really impressed by that, and I'm very, very glad that you presented that part. <laughs> yeah, well, I got there in the end. I think I think you guys understand what it is. No, anyway, it doesn't matter. I hope you guys enjoyed our tech tour. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to GTN for more tech and everything triathlon.